Hanging out backstage in the dressing room of the guys from Alter Bridge. So good to see you guys, man. Good to see you. It's FanPass.tv. Guys, we go back so long now, it's amazing. I can tell you something. I mean, Mark Scott, I remember when the first time I heard about you guys, it was one of your parents was on a boat on a circle line. on uh, <laughs> And I was shooting for MTV or something. And they're like, you know, how you doing? When you, oh, you're on MTV? They go, our sons have this band called Creed. And I had already heard My Own Prison. And I said, this is a great song. I love it. They go, oh, yeah. So then I looked for the whole record. And it was so funny when I finally met you. And I don't remember whose parent it was. Your mom, could, probably? It wasn't. Me. No. It was Brian's. Oh, it was, it was, it, it might have been Brian's. Or it was probably Brian Scott, Scott, right? It might be Brian yeah. or Scott's. Yeah. yeah. But they were proud of the record. And uh, <laughs> it was very cool. So, and that was my introduction to you. Mm -hmm. And I love the other story about how we met. Do you remember the night we finally met, guys, when when you were in Creed and you were opening for Van Halen at Madison Square? Oh, yeah. Remember oh, yeah. what happened that oh, night? Yeah, like, yes. what we did? Yeah. Uh, I, I remember the biggest memory I have from that day is getting a guitar from Eddie. Eddie came in the room and yeah. was knocking on the door, and we were having a private band discussion that didn't answer it. He <laughs> knocks again, we don't answer, then finally he comes in, he's like, here's your guitar. Yeah. Uh, this what a great time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you guys have been friends ever since, man. Yeah. I mean, it's a great thing that there's a long time relationship there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he's always been a fan, and you guys love that. I remember, yeah, absolutely. You know, I remember you guys, we, I, we, we got backstage. What was happening was, I was shooting down on the Jersey Shore, and then, you know, the deal was that I'd made a deal with Eddie Van Halen and with Alex and with Michael Anthony and those guys that I would get my friend engaged on stage. He was a medic right. at uh, in, in the Iraq, first Iraq war yeah. at Desert Storm. He lived through it, but he had, I made him embarrassed. I made him show his Van Halen tattoo to the guys. <laughs> and he was my producer, you know? Yeah, um, right. And uh, so he goes, we're kicking around, we're having dinner. We were at 5150 Eddie's studio, and then we go out to dinner. Mm -hmm. And I go, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be cool, man? If, you got you guys. You want to get engaged? Right? It happened at a Van Halen show, and they're like, "We'll do it." <laughs> so they did it, and you know, it was it was great. And it was the night I met you guys. Yeah. I got there, caught the end of your set, and that was great. And then I watched them, and then they mm. brought me up. With, the fake thing that was happening was they were saying that the story was it was a lie that Eddie wanted me to sing backup on Jump during the encore, wow. which I would have done, but that wasn't the thing. So I get on stage, crowds cheering, and I go, "My friend's a huge Van Halen fan." And, he, it was always his dream to get up here on stage. And I say, here he is, Austin Reddy. He's a producer of Matt Rock, my show. He gets up and and then he goes, but I so, I love it. Hey, it's my favorite band, but I have something more important to do. And he gets on his knees. Eddie and Michael Anthony pull her up on stage, and he oh, drops yeah. to his knees and proposes wow, marriage. Wow. And then we all hung out afterwards. Yeah, they, Jay hung they, out with you guys. Are they still together? Yes, they are. Good. In go. fact, you want to know something? It worked. Yesterday was your wedding anniversary, and it was so oh, wow. funny and knowing I was going to see you guys today, because yeah. I saw that on Facebook, it was cool. Wow. So what an incredible career you guys have had. I mean, Thank between you. Alter Bridge and Creed, two incredible bands that are, I mean, when I say that, I mean how well you've done, I mean, think about it. Like, how many records have you guys sold? Do you know, combined, uh, how many? Seven. Uh, no, I don't know. Seven, eight, no. No, yeah. come on! Like, how many million? It's got to be in a hundred, a hundred somewhere, right? Uh, so at this point? I think the, uh, I think the uh, the biggest record we we did was Human Clay, and I think that did uh, over eleven million. So yeah. it's uh, right now. I don't know, we have about. I, I know I've done nine records. You've done eight records, right? No, you've done nine records yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 Well, let's say and you did the Tremonti record as well. Mm -hmm. Friends coming in doing your thing and people playing. And, yeah. You know, with all the people you've come across over the years. Yeah. The Alter Bridge thing, like you know, when that happened. How did you guys end up finding Miles Kennedy? Because Miles is great, man. I've known him since he was 16 years old. Tell me about that. He was in the Mayfield Four that opened up for Creed back in the day, and I had a buddy uh, who said, "Remember this band that used to open up for you?" And we're driving in the car, and he puts on a song called "Summer Girl." Yeah. And the end of that song, Miles just gives it his all, and yeah. then, uh, I'm like, yeah, that would be pretty, pretty badass to have that guy sing in our band. So. Um, I started putting together demos for the first Alter Bridge record and having local guys come in to try out. Mm -hmm. We actually went out to, uh, there's a talent agent out in LA that sent us his top guy, who actually ended up being my cousin's um, husband's brother. So yeah. it's a small world. <laughs> yeah, small, small world, big yeah. families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Exactly. He talked about all cousins, exactly. he out, which is cool. And yeah. he sounded like Bon Scott, but it just yeah. wasn't the right fit for us. So yeah. uh, finally we found, we uh, called Miles and he was down with it, sent him some demos he sang over him sounded great and, and he flew down january 2nd 2002 yep. yeah no 2004. 2004 yeah 2004 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i got somebody i took a picture of me meeting miles and mayfield for the first time because mm -hmm. they were 16. Mm -hmm. the word was i got the call from the guy at epic records mm -hmm. harvey leeds who was a promo guy and he mm -hmm. said matt he goes you know 
part of the, the Michael Ford's name comes from your last name because if I remember correctly, and mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong, I think Susan Silver, who had a sound card, was working with him at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. She took home and told me to, she said, the field part is from your last name, Matt Pin, Pinfield, because they had a dream you were introducing the band, a video. <laughs> wow. And they said the other part was either Mayfield or Mayfair, some bar I think they could drink in illegally at 16. <laughs> wow. So that was, it was a combination of those two. And I thought that was always super that's, cool. That's awesome. Now he's, and yeah, I, I love that song, Don't Walk Away, that was on that first Mayfield yeah. Yeah. record. It's yeah, yeah. loud, it's beautiful. Yeah. And then... Uh, it's made those great records with you, and obviously Slash being a huge fan. Yep, yep, Having yep. this stuff there. Absolutely, you Miles, know, is, Miles so is a busy kid right he now. He really is, sure. it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You it's know what I mean, growing up, growing, like you guys growing up in rock and roll. Yeah. You know, and let's talk about Fortress and, and, and you know, working with Elvis Basquette, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just an incredible producer. Is he like kind of, kind of, kind of a fifth member? Of Walter Bridge in a way, he's, when you say that, I mean, you feel like... The, he's he almost kind of become a fifth member. We started with him on the Blackbird record. And we're talking about the producer, Elvis Baskin, um, right? Yeah, who produced uh, produced Blackbird, produced AB3, and then produced yeah. uh, and mixed uh, Fortress, which is our current album. Yeah, Fortress. And it, he just came in, he's about our age, maybe a year or two younger than us. I think so. Um, and just came in with a passion for the music, and, and Miles had had a relationship with him before, um, I think on the second scan record, if I remember right, from, from Mayfield 4, yeah. where he was the engineer on that album. And um, just really, really seemed to get what Alter Bridge was about. Not yeah. try and change it, not conform it to something else, or just really let us express ourselves as a band and sort of expand upon that. Yeah. And, you know, from the first uh, pre production session that we did with him, uh, I. For me personally, I could just tell he was the right fit for, for what this band is about. And yeah, most producers want to dummy you down so you can get on radio. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to... Let you do what you do let, and let yeah, the yeah. music get Let the band so grow exactly. and be artistic. And, I yeah, love that. And it's, he just nailed it. It seemed like every record, he, you know... And it's amazing, too, because are you guys still living around in, in Florida and living around like where you, where you were? Or are you, 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 yeah, we do. And... and when we met Tell Elvis, he's, he's local too. He was from well, he Virginia, is, yeah. in Virginia, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. he had told me once that he moved to Orlando because he because he works with us so much and and we're his buddies that he wanted to move mm -hmm. down and be closer, and now he has his studio up in Virginia still. I think Lamb of God will rent it out every now and yeah. then and record mm -hmm. there, um, but uh, but yeah, he's a local guy now and. It's funny, we hardly ever see him because he works nonstop every single day. He's Constantly. in there until 3 in the yeah. morning. So yeah. That's very cool. Good yeah. guy. It was funny because I was checking in. I know he's finishing here at the Fortress. Mm -hmm. And then he was going to, there's time in between Slash's records. So yep. I was going to help out a friend's band mm -hmm. and have him, uh, you know, do work on the record. Yeah, he yeah. wanted to do it, but the problem was the drum room wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He had the other part of it. And, right, and it right. just time went, it wasn't yeah. going to work out. Right, right, right. So, uh, but, but he's a great guy and mm -hmm. love the work he's done. Yeah, on he's records. phenomenal. Now, how was it, was it fun doing the solo record too? That was awesome. You, Mark? And Elvis did that. You know, yeah. Elvis. Yeah. It's funny. Elvis. Elvis mixed uh, the, the projected record that he did with John Connolly and yeah. and Eric Friedman, and then he brought all those guys, which is cool too. That was yeah, yeah. Record, Vinny too. from Seven Dust, John from Seven yeah. Dust, all those guys. Yeah, and then uh, with the solo record, he was just the obvious choice to go to, and and. Um, you know, we didn't go into as much depth as we did do with an Alter Bridge record. It's more quick. It's like let's get in, do pre-production in a couple of days, and start recording with Alter Bridge. Hang it out. Let's do pre-production for three weeks. Yeah. You know, where it's a much. So it feels like the songs are great, and you you guys are in the room making sure hashing out all the oh, yeah. yeah. and doing it right, so you yeah. feel like you got it there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. I wasn't fun putting that. 10 year anniversary box together. I have like 27 discs in it or so something that's, like that's that. A lot Talk going to me on. about it. It's fantastic though, but it's an ultimate dream for a, a, an Alter Bridge fan out there. I mean, it had interviews, it had DVDs. Yeah. Did you just guys just have a you know, compile it or were you just like, this is going to be a fun project? Was, we had a, a, the guy that does a lot of our live DVD stuff, um, a guy named Dan Catullo, really was sort of the brainchild behind that. Oh, Came up with the idea and he was like, I, we've got all this catalog. We've got releases on all these, uh, you know, performances from if it's from Download 2005 yeah, or yeah. whatever, you know, we can get all of this in, in a, a high quality, you know, Blu-ray format yeah. and compile all of this together, put, the, you know, like a coffee book together, a coffee table book together um, of things that just different people had compiled over the years and basically just sort of sent it in. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I... I'm excited to see them. I'm excited to get them because it's, yeah. you know, it's definitely going to be a, a trip oh, down memory lane. I have no clue. 
Because I had heard all. 27 discs in, yeah. in entirety, meaning yeah, yeah, DVDs yeah. and CDs. Yeah, there's been a yeah. lot of juggling yeah. between um, getting sign-offs from labels and the, and the production company signing off. And the it's, a, the it's, just a, it's a big business yeah. wrestling match right now to get it out. We've we've yeah. a, approved it's, um, all the stuff that's going in there. It's just, uh, uh, it's yeah. just a matter of letting everybody else who has a piece of the pie. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's always kidding people sign off well. on stuff, believe me, I know. With yeah. everything you've done in your whole career, yeah. we've, we've had three or four record labels. And um, you move from label to label, you going from yeah. wind up to road yeah. runner, too. Yeah. And those changes. We've had many yeah. managers, many record labels, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, it's tough to get everybody to say yes to stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and it's, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's a process, but it's got to get done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your absolutely. Your fans would love that. You're still going to call it Ultra Bridge 10, Roman numeral? Very good. Guys, tell me, we're at a festival, Welcome to Rockville, here in Jacksonville, Florida, 2014. I, cause, because we're rock fans and we've always gone to shows, what was your best festival show you ever saw? And you're, oh, you're, you know, you've seen it, you know, whenever you were a kid or something. Mm. What was your worst festival experience? Like, the thing that annoyed you, <laughs> was it no bathrooms or no overflowing porta johns? Or, yeah, and, and, right. So tell me about, answer both those questions, the two of you. Favorite festival you saw as a kid or uh, the first thing you saw, maybe? I think uh, the best experience I had was, um, it was, I, I don't even know which one it was, but I, it was, uh, Judas Priest was headlining, yeah, and I got to see Halford and all the other guys backstage and say hi to everybody. That's crucial. Um, and then um, Nova Rock. And it was a Nova, Nova Rock. And then I yeah. go up on stage while um, Rage Against the Machine was playing, mm -hmm. and I saw probably the best performance I've ever seen of a band live of yeah. Rage Against the Machine. I say they they are the best live band I've ever seen. They're amazing. And, uh, they really are. Yeah. I remember um, I remember backstage hearing one of the guitar players or something from Judas Priest going like, hey. You guys got to come out and check out what this band is doing. We need to, you know, yeah. kind of take what they're doing and see if we can work with them. So I'm just yeah. trying to think Judas of Judas Priest, Priest watching Rage yeah. Against the Machine. And it's kind of yeah. cool because, you know, it's full circle, though, because you know yeah. that Tom and those guys had Priest records. I know that yeah. you know, oh, yeah. Tom, he was a huge Kiss fan as a kid, you know, yeah. and, you know, Rush records. So, like, they listen to everything, you know, so yeah. it was, I love the full circle thing. Oh, yeah. The bands come full, full on around. Yeah. Worst, but worst festival experience. Um, and I'm saying, like, you know, it, it could be either the gig itself or just the shit. Stuff that goes on, mm. missing a flight, and, and, and no sound. What was it like? It could have been another Nova Rock. It was when, um, <laughs> when I was five minutes before stage time, my guitar tech comes over to me and says, "Dude, all your amps just blew. The power over here is screwy. We lost all your fuses. I've been asking all these bands for fuses. Nobody has any. You've got one amp that survived, and it's one I never use. It's like a deep backup amp yeah. that sucks. It's the one that like." And this, you never thought you'd plug another uh, cord I never, into it. I never liked it. It was just there for strictly yeah. backup. And yeah. uh, that was the day when all the hot new um, guitar players were up there, you know. And, and I, and Who I else was playing that night? I think it was, uh, gosh, it was it was all the metal dudes. It was like the Avenged guys, yeah, the Trivium the thing, guys, yeah. the yeah. Um, all the bands with the lead with the leads going on. Um, yeah. And uh, I wanted I wanted to be a good day, and uh, it was just. Uh, it was it was terrible. Yeah, I, I didn't have no rock. Yeah. I, I didn't have like a clean tone that day for any fun, kind of finger style playing. It was just all dirty and yeah. uh, no lead, just yeah. all kind of. So you were just like, man, I want this set to end. Yeah. Oh, you know, you're like, it's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. We'll make this show a memory. Now yeah. you answer both discussions. All right. Uh, first rock experience or your best rock festival? Growing uh, up. Probably the best, day. and and wow. it really was my first was Lollapalooza in 1991. Yeah. Um, one. With. Uh, it was James Addiction, Susie and the Banshees, Living Color. Living yeah. Color was the band that I went to go see. It was my favorite band. Still to this day. Vernon Reed's amazing, dude. They're right. awesome. We actually just got to play with them in Australia for uh, Soundway Festival. And they're good dudes, aren't they? Oh, Super yeah. nice. Yeah, Super Vernon nice. and I did a whole thing on PBS TV. Like, we did a tribute to Hendrix together. Oh, yeah. So we, like, we, we were, it was a pledge drive. So yeah, yeah. All the, yeah. It was really cool, you know. So, uh, but I love that. And it was sitting, like, sitting in the, the, the audience that day and just watching this massive stage that was in the middle of nowhere in Orlando. And, you know, just watching everything that was going on with that, the performance, the crowd, they're, you know, that must have been 15, 20,000 yeah. people there. That's and I, I, sitting out there and I was staring at the stage, I'm like, I want to do that. I want to be them. I want to be yeah. a part of that. And that was probably one of the, the biggest right? factors. Yeah, the, the catalyst for me, sort of really trying to pursue this as a career. And lo and behold, here yeah. we are, you know. That's doing good, the yeah. side wave, you know, when we're in sound, you know, doing the sound wave, we got to do the side wave shows with Living Color. So it was just us and them. Yeah. You see, Scott just. Dream, dreamily watching <laughs> the whole, the so whole set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Such good guys, I was just sitting man. there behind Will Calhoun the whole time, videotaping yeah. everything they did. So, so, yeah, he's such a talented guy. God is amazing. They're a great, amazing. 
rock band, man. Yeah. So Black that, or white or whatever it is, those guys killed it. Yeah. Great. They've yeah, always yeah. been a great live band. Absolutely. Like for summer records, and I was just Randy Vernon and I hooked up and went to that Soundgarden when they oh, came yeah. back around again. Not yeah, just yeah. on the last tour, you know, yeah, yeah. around. Now they're doing Super Unknown, which is great. But yeah. All right, worst experience worst back, or like at, at a festival. I don't know if there's one like but you can get particular, big, big, but it, in general, uh, festival experiences between good and bad for a band are always going to involve catering and bathrooms. Yeah. Catering's good, and the bathrooms are decent. Yeah. You're good to go. You're They're good, not. Yeah. It's a, just a horrible day all day long. Did you ever get sick on tour eating uh, overseas in, in another country? Oh, yeah. Because you're not used to the bacteria in the food? Because I got this there in Brazil. I was there with you, too. Uh, everybody, Bono got, you know, everybody got, so I'm wondering, like, did you ever do that? And, like, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, man, I got to run off stage. Mm. No encore. It has not, has not happened to me yet. Yeah. Although, for, for me, vodka tends to kill everything. Yeah. You put enough in your system. Yeah, well, that, you know, that's, you know. Like, that's true, you know, because it, it has an effect. Right. You get rid of some of that bacteria. <laughs> yeah. I had it on when I I was doing the solo band I, I was at home and I had the, the 24 hour bug like five days before I went on tour mm -hmm. got that out of my system I'm like you know I'm glad that happened at home get over on tour and about four days into the tour I got the same damn thing just another strain of it over oh, in Europe man, and really? uh, I got it on my day off so we played the next day I was just a little a little bit a little uh, yeah. yeah dehydrated but uh, yeah yeah, you know that you know how that goes. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. But you hey, the show went on and you did it. And that's yeah. it's, it's yeah. the work yeah. ethic. Guys, great to have you here, man. Good to hang out. Good with to you. see it's you, it's man. Absolutely. On TV. I love always seeing you. We go back so many years yeah. now. And, you know, I send my best and, and love to uh, Brian and uh, Miles. And Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll Absolutely. see you soon. We're looking forward to that box set. It's uh, FanPass.tv, Matt Pinfield. And of course, hanging out with Mark and Scott from Alter Bridge. Welcome to Rockville 2014.